And I'm very excited about this now because we're going live to London's Covent Garden where we've got exclusive access to a singer's dressing room. You can see him there right now. Uh, he is Gerald Finlay performing in the Royal Opera's production of Mozart's The Marriage of Figaro. Hello, Jerry. Hi, how are you? <laughs> uh, I'm very good. I'm very excited to see you still in costume there. How, how was the performance? Yes, it was a full house, which is always a great uh, energy boost for the cast, but it went very, very well. Lovely. So talk me through your role then in the story. Oh, well, I play the role of the Count. And uh, the Count certainly thinks that the entire evening is about him. Um, and he's effectively trying to prevent the marriage of Figaro uh, because Figaro is engaged to Susanna, the, uh, the, one of the other servants um, in the castle of Aguas Pesca. But the Count... Um, is trying to uh, uh, have the privilege of spending uh, her, uh, her wedding night with her, as, is, as was the custom. He has recently abolished that particular law. I mentioned that it's been voted third best opera to take a newbie to. Would, would you agree with that? That's been done by the Guardian readers. Oh, I think, well, very sensibly, the Guardian readers. Uh, I, I, I would put it even higher than that. It was the first opera that I ever took part in. And uh, as a as a soloist, and that was really uh, it made me realize that actually Mozart's music, uh, you know, is it's so joyous um, in spite of the serious nature of some of the subject. Uh, he, he turns this comedy uh, into this amazing, effervescent, joyous evening, and in some ways, uh, it is the comic opera I think of of all time. Uh, uh, I'm sure that some of the other operas. Uh, are probably aren't um, the, the favorite operas aren't so uh, comedy driven. So I think for for people's initial encounter with a, you know with a fun evening in mind, Figaro is definitely the way to go. Jerry, I don't want to waste this opportunity of having a camera in a dressing room. Would you okay. mind just sort of showing us round with the camera? Yes. What have you got there? What can you see? Well, uh, did, I mean, particularly this particular dressing room at Covent Garden. Um, actually, in fact, does, in fact, um, look on to the piazza in Covent Garden. So <laughs> This is fancy. Isn't that fantastic? Um, anyway, so I hear a lot of the buskers uh, outside the window in the piazza, seeing all the Tilt lights. Tilt it up go. slightly. Let's just see where, how far that view goes. Oh, I it's see. almost to English National Opera, actually. <laughs> almost to the Colosseum, right the way down. Uh, we'll that's... catch up with them later, actually. Yeah, very good. So um, anyway, lots of busy life, and it's always nicely distracting when uh, when one's getting ready there. And what's uh, on your table? Can I see? Oh well, you've caught me on a day when I haven't been feeling too well. <laughs> um, I've had a really nasty cold these last few days. So oh no! Like um, this uh, this very wonderful product, which uh, stops cold from from carrying on. A real singer's friend that is. Uh, and uh, it's meant that I've been able to deal with this cold a little bit better than others. What's um, the secret formula in that then? Oh, what's these? Lots of water. Lots of water. To yes, keep the you water say water. Well. There's no proof of that. Uh, uh, do, do you have to do things like not eat chocolate or cheese and all those sort of things we hear about singers? Does that go on? Well, I always leave for, for myself, actually. My, I, I give myself a treat at the end of every opera that I do, and I always have a some sort of chocolate at the end, either Ooh, cake or a brownie fella. or something, because I'm not allowed to have it beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> and do you do your own makeup? And will there be like blusher and things there? Is there makeup going oh, on? Well, it, I'm, I'm very uh, privileged here at Covent Garden where there is actually makeup artists who, who do it for, for me. Right. Um, so I'm, I go to a room down the hallway, outside and down the hallway, where uh, someone attends to that. But I get to take it off here. Uh, because um, it's very easy. This is the sideboard that I wore, and that, that just comes off. Oh. So that's very easy to do. Oh, look at that. You look like a sort of opera David Hasselhoff, if I might say. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Have you yes, had that before? Yes, very, <laughs> uh, no, the costume itself is, is amazing. This is, you know, uh, I mean, the high jabot and double waistcoat. Can you imagine? I mean, it's, you know, two waist, one waistcoat on top of another, and I wear a big coat on top of that, too. Um, uh, I wear all sorts of rings, a couple of uh, rings ending up on the table, and um, 
Yeah, and it's 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 finery, definitely finery. But uh, yes, and real shirts. Can you imagine? Really, these are linen shirts which we get to wear as well. So we're absolutely in period uh, for the time of this particular production, which is 1830, 1835. Beautiful. What sort of state? What sort of health do you think British opera is in? Well, I think uh, I mean from when I was a young singer, I, I'm very pleased to see things like young artist programs being supported by all the opera companies now, uh, in, and in addition to things like the National Opera Studio. And I even think that the training facilities and all the conservatories are producing singers, uh, you know, to a level which is, uh, well, at many singers at a, at a very good level. I think the number of opportunities for, uh, for performances, I think the opera companies have done such an amazing job in, you know, galvanizing new audiences, um, uh, maintaining old audiences, getting people on subscriptions, and and you know offering really good uh, variety of repertoire. The standard is is pretty pretty good, I have to say. And uh, I don't know whether that's to do with things programs like you're doing right now, getting people engaged and and uh, uh, you know making getting behind the scenes and seeing what we do. I, I suppose as um, as the the professionals putting it on. It makes it fascinating, I hope, for, for the audience people. Well, thank you very much for letting us see into your dressing room. Gerald Finley, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much.